For today's Sunday case study, we have a 26 year old female who presents to me with neck pain and headaches. Now she's had these headaches for months, but they seem to have gotten progressively worse. She also admits to having dizziness, nausea and vomiting, as well as trouble with her vision. She went to an eye doctor and when they did a retinal exam, they said they saw papilledema. Here's the MRI of her brain, which honestly is fairly unremarkable. Okay, so what do you think the diagnosis is and what did I mean by papilledema? What does that mean? Also, what test should we run on this patient to try to help work it up? And once confirmed, what is the treatment for this condition? Stay tuned tomorrow and I'll give you the full rundown. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 26-year-old female who came to the office with complaints of headache, neck pain, nausea and vomiting, as well as trouble with her vision. And we mentioned that the MRI scan was normal. On eye exam, she was found to have papilledema. With the MRI scan being normal, that rules out Chiari malformation and the other structural abnormalities, which some of you guys suggested. I mentioned that she has papilledema, and that's when the eye doctor looks in the back of your eye and looks at your optic nerve. Here's a picture of what that would look like, and basically that means the optic nerve is very swollen, which is an indicator of increased intracranial pressure. What that means is there's a buildup of pressure in the brain, which is causing that optic nerve to be very swollen, and it's causing the headaches. The next test would be a lumbar puncture, which many of you got, which would measure that intracranial pressure or the pressure inside of the brain. Assuming that pressure was high or greater than 20, that would confirm the diagnosis of what many of you guessed, which is pseudotumor cerebri or idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Those are a lot of big words, but basically what it means is that there is some kind of malabsorption problem in the brain and the fluid gets backed up on the brain and causes increased elevated pressures in the brain. It's called pseudotumor cerebri because it means false tumor or it mimics the symptoms of a brain tumor. It's most commonly diagnosed in women of childbearing age or women ages 20 to 50, and typically those women are overweight. So what causes pseudotumor cerebri? In most cases, it's idiopathic, meaning we don't really know why. We do typically perform, in addition to MRI imaging, is an MR venogram or a CT venogram to rule out a venous sinus thrombosis, which can be a potential reversible cause of pseudotumor cerebri. The treatment really depends on how high the pressure is, but it can consist of weight loss, which can actually cure this condition. We often use a medication called Diamox, which draws off extra water in the body, which will help alleviate the pressure. It's also a medicine that we use to treat high blood pressure. We often get ophthalmologists involved in the patient's care if they do have papilledema or trouble with their vision, and small little slits can be placed in the optic nerve to help alleviate the pressure and help the vision. Sometimes surgery is recommended to help alleviate the pressure inside of the brain, and that's typically done by shunting of the fluid to divert the fluid of flow from the brain into the abdomen. That helps redirect the fluid from the brain to decrease the pressure in the brain. In terms of types of shunts that we use for pseudotumor, there's two main types. One is called a ventriculoperitoneal shunt, which basically we place a tube that goes into the brain, and it's controlled by a valve that's under the scalp, and then the fluid is drained through a tube that goes all the way into the abdomen. The second type of shunt is called a lumboperitoneal shunt, which basically goes into the spine in the lower back and does the same thing. It drains fluid into the belly to divert the pressure. So good job to many of you guys who got the right answer and stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.